Hey everyone, what's going on? Thanks for swinging by. I sure do appreciate it. If this is your first time with the channel, my name is Mark. Oh, hi Mark. Welcome to Fit and Fire. Let's get into this video. This time we're going to be talking about the Glock 47 MOS. And this is a pistol that I've had pretty much the entirety of this year. Still trying to figure out how to pull together a video for you guys. Obviously, this has been around for... I don't know, what, six, eight, ten months, something like that. And uh, naturally, it's always great to be the first to talk about this pistol and uh, have your content out there before everybody else. But I am the type of person that likes to take my time, get into the pistol a little bit, get some rounds through it, and uh, try to understand its place in the sea of other defensive handguns that are on the market today. If you're not familiar with this pistol, I'll give you a quick 50,000 foot overview of this. Realistically, this is a pistol that was requested by Customs and Border Patrol or CBP. They basically wanted to have a pistol that could be configured in several different ways. And we'll talk about that in this video. Essentially, what this is, is a Glock 17 with a Glock 19 recoil spring, which gives it a couple of different attributes. You know, this pistol, it is basically a Glock 17 MOS. It allows for a red dot to be added to this. I have ran uh, the majority of uh, about the 500 rounds that I've put through this with the Swamp Box Kraken and uh, really did enjoy that particular setup. But that is not exactly how I ran this particular pistol for the majority of that time. All right, so as you see it right now is exactly how I have ran the majority of the rounds through it. It is the 47 slide on the Glock 19 frame. And that is one of the major attributes that uh, leads for this pistol to be somewhat innovative in the fact that you can uh, configure it exactly how you want it. So if you want a Glock 19 long slide, you can definitely do that. I have found that shooting it in this configuration was a lot of fun. It's exactly what you would expect from this type of configuration. Maybe just a little bit snappy uh, with that Glock 19 recoil spring and a longer slide, but overall it was a very pleasurable experience. It was virtually 100% reliable. I think I may have had one stove pipe, which could have been uh, just a bad round. Not sure, but at the end of the day, it was 99.9% .9 reliable. So that is something I really did like about it. Now, if this is not particularly the uh, configuration that you want, you can create your other configuration. That other configuration is going to be with the Glock 19 slide on the Glock 47 frame. This is essentially going to create a Glock 45. And that, uh, again, gives this a lot of uh, modularity in the fact that you are capable of, you know, creating a couple of different configurations with basically two different pistols. So if you have a Glock 19 already, you purchase the Glock 47, then you can run it how I just had it, or you can run it this way, or you can run it just in its stock configuration as well. And that is one of the great things about the Glock 47 is that it is compatible with Glock 17, Gen 5 MOS, Glock 19, Gen 5 MOS, and the Glock 45. MOS. So that is really great and quote unquote innovative from Glock. However, the downside to it, in my opinion, is it's kind of too little too late. We have seen other manufacturers already do this for years and years. I mean, you see Polymer 80, they've been doing this type of thing for uh, man, half a decade or more. You have shadow systems that have uh, various different configurations that are very similar to this. Even the Arex Delta Gen 2 has the ability to do all of this and they did it all before Glock released this to the civilian market. Now, 
had this been released in 2017, uh, we would have a different conversation. Heck, even in 2018 or 2019, we might be having a different conversation as well. But in 2023 or even late 22, you know, it's just it just seems like it's a little bit too late. So there is that aspect of it. Okay, so back to the Glock 19 long slide configuration. Uh, like I had said, I shot the majority of the 500 rounds in this particular configuration, at least what I filmed anyway, and uh, I did not have any complaints whatsoever, as mentioned already. Uh, running this in my local uh, IDPA matches, uh, I had been running this Bravo Concealment Torsion 3.0, holster, uh, which is pretty cool because it does offer a nice little sidecar that you can attach or not. So that is uh, really nice too. And um, really nothing to write home about. It's exactly what you would expect a Glock to do. Um, feels like a Glock 17 slide on a Glock 19 frame. Shoots like a Glock 19 wood, maybe just a little bit snappy, like I had mentioned, but outside of that, it is exactly what I would have expected this. Uh, with the Swamp Fox Kraken that was mounted on this, uh, it ran just fine as well. Uh, really did enjoy the Kraken uh, on a Glock platform. Really, really nice. About the only other thing that you would need to do is swap out the sights for a taller um, suppressor height or optic height sight uh, to help co-witness if you should choose to do so. But I've already talked about that in my Kraken video. I'll have a link to that at the end if you guys are interested in checking that out. So at the end of the day, what do I think about the Glock 47? Uh, it's a great gun. You know, there's nothing wrong with any of the Glocks. They're going to do exactly what you would expect it to do and it's going to be reliable. The accuracy obviously is there. I've been able to shoot my Glock 19 um, Gen 5 MOS up to 25 yards and still be able to group at about an inch, uh, especially with the defensive ammunition that I use for it. So for me, shooting uh, offhand at 25 yards, about an inch group, that's pretty good. That's really good for me. Uh, unfortunately, from my perspective, I have moved away from being such a quote unquote Glock fanboy and actually prefer the CZ P10C or even the P365X macro comp. Those two firearms, in my opinion, do better for me in what I need it to do. Whether it be concealed carry or even competition shooting, I feel more confident shooting those two pistols than I do a Glock of any configuration, whether it be 17, 19, 47, whatever, it doesn't matter. So that's just me and how I do things. If Glock is right for you, by all means, you guys run it, run it well, run it hard, and obviously get some training with that as well. But again, at the end of the day, those are just my opinions. And uh, I would love to hear what you guys have to say down in the comment section as to where do you think the Glock 47 fits in the world of polymer frame striker fire pistols? That is always the question. Um, obviously, Glock has a reputation of having great pistols, but is that starting to wane? I think there's a lot of other pistols out there that are doing better at Glock than Glock. <laughs> but at the end of the day, I would love to hear what you guys have to say. As always, I really do appreciate you guys swinging by and checking things out. Uh, thank you so much for supporting the channel in so many different ways. If you haven't already subscribed, I would ask that you guys consider doing so, giving me a thumbs up and then commenting down below uh, really helps with the algorithm and promoting this to get this out there for uh, anybody else. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get out of here. Again, thank you so much. As always, freedom through strength. Here comes a high five. We'll catch you guys later. Bye, y'all.